Let's learn Battling Boxer. And welcome back to Let's Learn, Yugi Tube's fiercest deck building show. I'm Hardleg Joe, if in you didn't know, joined as always by my tag team partner Critter, and of course Twitch Chat over there keeping me company, putting some cats in the chat, just being adorable as we look at Battling Boxers, a rank 4 fire archetype of boxers from the early Ixy era that just got some new support in Master Duel, which probably won't make them meta or anything, but it'll make them better, better than they were. And if you're unfamiliar with Let's Learn, this is a blind deck building show. I'm going to be going in here, looking at these cards for the first time, and trying to figure out how they work, just reading over everything. As such, this will not be the best battling boxer deck, or even necessarily a good boxer deck, but it should give you a good idea of how the deck functions. I'll be reading over every card, explaining how they work, what's good, what's bad, and if you're new at deck building, this should give you some insight into how an experienced Yugist gets it done. I've been playing this game for 10 plus years now, I climb the ladder with a different deck every month, so I'm pretty good at taking a bunch of cards I've never seen before and figuring out how they work on the fly. So we'll jump into that, but first, I want to give a thanks to this episode's sponsor, Cat Monarch, who's a high tier patron that requested this episode. Thanks to them, I don't have to take actual sponsors. Give them, give them a little shout out down in the chat, you know, a little thumbs up or whatever. And if you want to join the Patreon yourself, you know, there's a link down in the description. Just one dollar really helps. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hit the bell and jump into round one or something. Yeah. All right, so first things first, we gotta figure out where to even begin with this. And this is kind of an anomaly among all the other Let's Learns I've done. Uh, this is an older archetype that got new support, and I never played this when they were new. Previously, when we've done older archetypes, it was stuff I was familiar with, so we could just read the newer cards. This time, we're going to have to read everything. But I still think it's good to start with the newer cards. Those are going to be stronger. They're going to give us a better idea of what the win condition is, what the modern win condition is anyway. So we'll begin there. And if you're trying to figure out which cards are the newer cards, uh, just look at the art. I've already separated them out, but I think it's pretty obvious if you look at like a card like this and one like this, like the shading and the color is just so much more intricate on ones like these. The old ones are so much simpler, whereas the new ones have, like, lighting effects and digital art and stuff. Although, we're not going to be starting with the main deck monsters. Anytime you have a deck that revolves around a whole bunch of extra deck monsters, it's always best to start with the extra deck monster. Now, normally, I recommend starting with the highest level one and then working your way down, but Ixies can be a little bit different. I noticed in particular that this one, the rank 5, is a number C79. And if you're unfamiliar with Ixy cards at all, the C, it stands for Chaos. Usually this is a ranked up version of their main monster. If you want to look at their main playmakers, it's going to be these regular ones. And I'm just going to assume it's this guy, Battling Boxer King Dempsey. So this is a rank 4 Fire Warrior, 2300 attack, 1800 defense. It's generic, just two level 4 monsters. And if this card is special summoned, you can take one level four or lower fire warrior or one battling boxer spell trap from your deck and either add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard. Okay, so it's a foolish burial or a rota. I'm guessing that all the monsters are fire warriors. Uh, yeah, looks like all fires, all warriors. Okay, so basically any, any battling boxer, but if you've got other fire warriors, you can add those in as well. Good to know. And then quick effect. You can detach one material from a monster you control, and if you do, apply the following effect. Your opponent cannot target battling boxers you control with card effects for the rest of the turn. You can only use each effect of Dempsey once per turn. Alright, so this is your searcher. Not necessarily the payoff or anything, but it gets you into the other cards, and it's good to know right off the bat that the spell traps and the monsters are searchable. At least the spell traps that say Battling Boxer on them, which doesn't appear... Okay, this is Battling Boxer Cross Counter. This is Ring Announcer, Battling Boxer Spirit. So it really just looks like these two, 
we might we might, might want to check those out first plus any of the monsters but before we do let's check out their other new level four monster number 79 battling boxer nova kaiser this has almost the same stats as the other one fire warrior 2400 attack generic materials gains 100 attack for each material attached to it so 200 attack most likely and once per turn during your main phase you can attach one battling boxer from your hand or graveyard to this card as material when this card in your possession is destroyed by an opponent's card and sent to the graveyard while it has material Target a level 4 lower battling boxer in your graveyard, up to the number of materials, and special summon them. Alright, maybe I misjudged this one. It has the art of a newer card, but that effect is way old. A floating effect and like the most underwhelming attack boost possible? There's, there's no way this is their payoff. Uh, these ones are definitely older, I've seen all these before, so I think the next thing, we gotta look at this thing. How the hell do we summon this thing? Hopefully this is a boss monster that actually does something. So this is number C79, Battling Boxer General Kaiser. It's 2600 attack, rank 5, that takes 3 level 5 monsters. Which, I mean, just looking at everything, these are all level 4. So that tells you right away that it's got to have some kind of alternate summoning condition. Whether it be a rank up spell or maybe something here, we'll see. Gains 200 attack for every material attached to it. Oh boy. <laughs> Once per turn, when your opponent would special summon a monster's quick effect, detach two materials, negate the summon, and if you do, destroy it. If this has number 79 Nova Kaiser as material, it gains this effect. Once per turn, when an attack is declared involving your battling boxer monster and an opponent's monster, you can send one battling boxer from your hand or deck to the graveyard, and if you do, attach that monster to this card as material. Wowee! Okay, now that is a boss monster. It's a, it's a solemn warning on legs, able to negate summons. That gives this very good go-first potential. And even though that effect only activates in the battle phase, it's a hell of a battle phase effect. Foolish burials a card as cost to non-targeting attach a material to this card. And it gains attack for each one attached. It's not a lot of attack, but it gains some. And of course you can detach those to negate special summon. So pretty decent, pretty decent. Of course there's no summoning effect on here. And I'm willing to bet that if there is one, it's probably on one of these spell traps. Normally, I would say if you've got an Ixie archetype, what you want to look at next to figure out how the deck works is the monsters, because you want to build these Ixies. But in this case, we've got sort of a missing puzzle piece here, right? How do we summon this thing? And from all the other Ixie decks I've played, it's most likely going to be some kind of spell. So let's start with these two spells, the spell and the trap, the two new ones, and then we'll check out this other battling boxer spell that we could search. These two that we can't search, we'll, we'll save for later. Okay, so we'll start with the ring announcer, which I did notice there were parentheses on this card. This is always treated as a battling boxer card. I, I don't know why they wouldn't just put it up there, but fine, whatever. The point is, because it's always treated as that, even in the deck, that means you can search it with the Ixie. And it says, special summon one battling boxer from your hand, then you can destroy spell traps on the field up to the number of Ixie monsters you control. You can only activate one ring announcer per turn. Ah, uh, This is an interesting one. Summoning from the hand usually isn't that useful, but it's on a card you can search, so it's probably worth playing at one. If nothing else, because it's a spell that removes spell traps. Uh, I could definitely see this, if nothing else, being a side card. If you're going up against some kind of back row heavy deck, or you know there's going to be facing a lot of floodgates. Having this in here, where you can just like... Like, clearly you're already going to have an Ixie, and then you're going to search this, and then you're going to summon another one from your hand, and probably blow up two cards. So it's a clear, like, plus one. So not, not awful, but definitely not the card we were looking for. Let's try this one next. Battling Boxer Cross Counter, which, which is a counter trap. Pretty good. Spell speed three. When your opponent activates a monster effect, destroy one Battling Boxer or number Ixie you control 
And if you do, negate that activation. And if you do that, destroy that monster. Then you can apply the following effect. Special summon a battling boxer Ixie from your extra deck with a different name than the first monster. And if you do, attach this card to it as material. You can only activate one battling boxer cross counter per turn. All right, so this gets you the rank five Ixie but only if you negate and destroy a monster effect and you have to destroy your other monster. Real quick, let me read this again. You can detach two materials to negate a summon and it's only going to have one material. It's just going to have this attached to it. So you get it out. I mean, it's nice that they have a searchable monster negate that's a counter trap. That's pretty good, but the cost seems pretty high and it doesn't actually turn this on. You have to be able to battle first and then you get a summon. Ugh, not, not looking too great. Uh, let's go ahead and look at our third. This is, a, this is an older card, so I doubt it, it does anything for this. But you never know. Sometimes those developers are tricky. Let's, let's see what we got here. It says, Battling Boxer Spirits. Normal spell card. You could search it with Triple Tactics Thrust. Send the top card of your deck to the graveyard. Then target one battling boxer in your graveyard, special summon it in face-up defense position. You can only activate one per turn. Okay, so it's a, it's a monster reborn. And for some reason it mills one card off the top. I don't know how that would be useful. I guess it depends how many cards in here have, have uh, extra deck stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm seeing there's some potential here. You know, there's some decent effects, some decent things, but it's not really coming together yet. So I think that means what we got to do next is go back to the extra deck. We've got a whole bunch more targets for this. Maybe there's something else you would rather use with this, something else that can get this out. So let's read through this and see if there's any synergies that we're missing so far. So next in line would be this number C105, but we've got the regular 105. So let's go ahead and read this one first, the rank four, and then we'll read this one. So number 105, Battling Boxer Star Cestus, rank four, three level four monsters with 2,500 attack. Once per chain during the battle step, if your Battling Boxer battles an opponent's monster, quick effect, Detach one material from this card, negate the effects of that monster while it's face up until the end of this turn. That monster you control cannot be destroyed by that battle, and your opponent takes any battle damage you would have taken from that battle. Uh, it's not awful. It does only take one. You can summon it off of the counter trap. It seems very niche. It is a non-targeting effect negate, but then again, if you wanted something that you could activate that was didn't target and got rid of a card in the, the, the battle step, you would just go for this. Uh, and then you'd have like a thing too. So I can't imagine there's any situation where you'd want to make this unless you need to like run into a pep and make them take the damage or something like that. You probably still play it at one. Maybe two if it ranks up into something good. Let's see what the upgrade does. Number C105, Battling Boxer Comet Cestus. This has 2,800 attack, four level five monsters, which is impossible to do in the deck. And if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, inflict damage equal to half the destroyed monster's attack. Uh, if this has number 105, Star Cestus as material, it also gains this effect. Once per turn, you can detach one material, target a monster your opponent controls, destroy it, and if you destroyed a monster, inflict damage equal to the, mo the attack that monster had on the field. So it's targeted destruction and a whole bunch of burn damage. It's not a quick effect. Uh, maybe you might want to summon this in a very simplified game state. Although if you get this off of the trap, it won't be able to do that second part. So it's mostly just there like if your opponent leaves one monster on the field and you don't have very many resources and you need to do burn damage, being able to attack for 28 and then afflict half the damage might be worth it. Uh, I'm really curious, usually if they're going to have a rank up, like an obvious rank up card, they would give the archetype something that works with that. But so far I'm not seeing anything unless one of these monsters does it. 
We'll see. We'll look at them next. First, let's round out the extra deck with a battling boxer lead yoke. I'm, I'm familiar with this one. This one I've seen. This was their old boss monster. Two level four battling boxer monsters, so it's not generic. 2200 attack. And if a battling boxer monster you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can detach one material instead of destroying that monster. And if a material is detached from this card, it gains 800 attack. So yeah, this kind of follows in the line of other old Ixy cards like Zen Mange, where if it would be destroyed, you detach, and then it gets stronger. Goes up to 3000 and then 3800. Pretty beefy, can stop two things from being destroyed. Not as good in an age where like effect negation is pretty good and a lot of stuff banishes or bounces back to the hand. But I'm just realizing this might combo with the trap. And if you do, destroy that monster, then you can apply the following effect. Okay, you don't actually have to destroy the monster. You can try to do it and this detaches. So that's the thing, you don't necessarily have to tribute. I think they're assuming you're going to make the lead yoke, set this, and then you'll be able to cross counter, get your lead yoke up some attack, and then summon like one of these on top of it. All right, chat is telling me I misread this. And unfortunately, this is one of those very nuanced like Yu-Gi-Oh card text things. Because it says then, that means you have to do the previous part in order to do the latter part. You have to destroy the monster, then you can do that. So I guess the thing is to make Dempsey and do it, but Dempsey doesn't get any effect when it's destroyed or anything. So you're just destroying a card to get this out with one material. And then I guess the only thing is if you've got a follow-up turn, right? Like you've got this and this. Then it's like, well, this can protect from destruction. This can protect from targeting. So you've got kind of a pseudo towers thing going on. Although they're not like big enough attack to really make that worth it. So really not feeling good about it. And then we've got Battlin' Boxer Cheat Commissioner, which is, I would read, except it's two level three monsters. And as far as I know, there's no, oh wait, we do have level threes. Okay, never mind. I thought these were all level fours, but there are some twos and threes. Okay, let's check this out and see if this, this does anything to fill in the gaps. So it's another Fire Warrior, zero attack, 1300 defense, pretty weak. Only takes two level threes and it's generic. So I don't know if you want to run tour guide, you can make this. All monsters your opponent controls must attack if able. While you control another battling boxer monster, your opponent's monsters can't target this card for attacks. When an attack is declared involving another battling boxer you control, you can detach two materials from this Look at your opponent's hand, then set one spell from their hand to your field. Well, that's a very interesting effect. I'll give him that. I, there's very few cards that let you look at your opponent's hands and steal things. I'm just not sure if it's necessarily good or possible to make this. They only have a couple level threes. I guess we'll figure it out. We'll keep that in mind. But, you know, an effect that relies on your opponent isn't something you really want to rely on. I guess it is something we can cheat out with this. Uh, it would have one material. If you had something else, but you're going to be destroying the other monster. But we'll see. I'm keeping all of these at one for now. You probably play like two Dempsey, maybe even three. But I'll put at least two there because it's the searcher. I assume you're going to make more. All right, so far, things not really coming together. These these last three monsters are really going to have to do some work. They're all level four, so I don't think any one in particular is, is super important. So let's just start with this. Battling Boxer Promoter. Level four, Fire Warrior, 1700 attack. And if your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can tribute this card, Special summon up to two battling boxers with different names from your deck, except other copies of itself. You can banish this card from your graveyard, increase or decrease the levels of all battling boxers you currently control by one. You can only use each effect of promoter once per turn, and you cannot special summon monsters the turn you activate this except battling boxer monsters. All right, so that initial thing, if your opponent controls a monster, that leads this to be like a go second card. This is an extender, not a starter. So probably a one at most, 
unless we're playing this as like a go second deck. But I don't really think you'd want to go second, considering so far the strongest card we've seen is a counter trap. Although I guess this is also kind of a, a like a battle trick. So maybe you just want to like go for or go second, beat in, steal their monster with this, and then you have like a solemn and a counter to stop them for, for getting any kind of follow-up. Maybe that's the idea. Uh, hard to say, hard to leg. Uh, real quick, you can use each effect once per turn. And this is three level fives. So you can, in theory, like, use this, summon two, and then if you have a way to get another level four on the field, maybe the, uh, the ring announcer or something, you can then banish this from the graveyard, make all of them level five, and go up into Kaiser. Or you can also lower their levels to go into Cheat Commissioner, if you want to steal a spell out of their hand. Uh, either way, we'll keep it at one for now, and let's look at Battlin' Boxer Uppercutter. Whoo, with the big fist! There's another level four Fire Warrior, 1600 attack this time. And if this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one Battling Boxer Monster or one Counter Counter Trap from your deck to your hand, except another copy of itself. If this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can activate one of these effects. Either special summon a Battling Boxer from your graveyard other than itself, or set one counter counter from your graveyard to your field. You can only use one uppercutter effect per turn and only once per turn. All right, that's interesting. So I'm not sure if they have any extenders, but this is probably a starter. I mean, it's your Stratos, it searches anything. You can get any monster out of the, out of the, the deck. And if you are going second, if your opponent has a monster, then it's like, Uppercutter, search promoter, summon promoter, uh, tribute it, summon two from the deck, make all their levels five, and that's that's how you get to Kaiser. So it's coming together. It also searches counter counter traps, which are their other two traps, jolt counter and last counter, as well as battle and boxer cross counter. So real quick, let's take a diversion and see if these are worth playing. Jolt counter, simple little counter trap. During the battle phase, when a spell trap or monster is activated, while you control a battle and boxer, negate the activation and destroy that card. If this didn't say during the battle phase, I would say play it, but I don't think it's worth it when you've got like a generic monster negate. Like, yeah, this gets spell traps, but only if they activate them during the battle phase. Very, very niche. Side deck at best. Uh, how about last counter? Good old anime fight scene. When an attack is declared involving a battling boxer monster you control and an opponent's monster, negate the attack. And if you do, send that monster you control to the graveyard? Then one battling boxer you control in attack position if you declared the attack gains attack equal to the original attack of the opponent's monster. Also, proceed to damage calculation using those monsters, then you take damage equal to the amount of attack gained from this effect. This is the most anime-ass card I have ever seen. This, this basically assumes that you have two battling boxers on the field, and you're attacking, and your opponent has a higher attack, so then you negate it, and then your other one gains the attack of the monster that... It's, it's a nightmare. I can only see this being useful if, like, then you activate double... Then your tag partner activates double or nothing. So your monster gets double its attack and you win the game by activating last counter. Otherwise, don't bother. We're, we're just playing cross counter. We're probably playing it at two because you could search it. Why not? We'll see. But n neither of those are worth it. So we've got one more new card. Let's check this out. Battling Boxer Chief Second. Level four, 500 attack, 2000 defense. During the main phase, you can normal summon one Battling Boxer in addition to your normal summon or set. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, while you control a warrior or a fire monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if you do, negate the attack. Then banish one monster on the field until the end phase. 
You can only use this effect of Chief Second once per turn. So, it's it's like an honorary flu under Reese. It gives you extra normal summons. I guess you play it for the the extra summon, maybe? And then and then it's a hand trap. When your opponent declares an attack, while you control a warrior or a fire, weird that it's or special summon this from your hand, negate the attack, then banish a monster. To be fair, it is like a better battle fader in some ways. I guess it doesn't end the battle phase, but at least gets rid of a monster. If you're fighting an Ixie, it removes the material. But... Uh, uh, not, not really sure how I'm feeling about this one. Both of these new cards are really kind of iffy. So far, I'm seeing like a fairly decent spam level fours onto the field engine but there's not enough search power or anything to really make that worth it, I feel like. You've got a spell trap search, but not really anything you can do with it. Uh, I mean, there's just a reborn. It's just putting more monsters onto the field. You don't have a whole lot of utility as far as I could tell. Well, let's go ahead and start looking at the older cards. Let's see if any of these are, are better than the new cards, or if we're playing all of these at three, because they're just a league above these even worse cards. And we'll start with a uh, battling boxer, Glass Joe. Got 2,000 attack, big, beefy, strong, zero defense. I guess, you know, because it's, it's got a glass jaw. If this card is targeted for an attack, destroy it. When this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target one battling boxer in your graveyard, add it to your hand. Uh, I could see how this would be good in the early Ixie era. Because it's basically an attack monster, or it's basically a defense wall that you put in attack position. They get rid of, but then you get a monster back so you can maybe make plays next time. I don't think we want to play it here though, because it's not going to be useful on the first turn. Uh, let's try Battling Boxer Shadow. Ooh, ah. 1800 attack. During your main phase, you can detach one material from a battling boxer, and if you do, special summon this from your hand. You can only use this once per turn. All right, so we got an extender. Got an extender that works pretty well, uh, especially in the modern age, and especially with Dempsey. You know, Dempsey, detach one, search this, then detach the other one, summon this. It kind of works, it's like a Time Thief card. We'll, we'll play at least one, maybe more of those. Uh, Battling Boxer Switch Hitter. Isn't Switch Hitter a, a baseball term? I don't know. 1500 attack, level 4 again. When this card is normal summoned, target one Battling Boxer in your graveyard, special summon it. You can have special summon monsters for the rest of the turn after you activate this, except Battling Boxers. Again, all of these feel like decent extenders if you had a bunch of search power. This, this feels like another one of... Granted, you know, if you if you can use like ring announcer or um, promoter to get a card out and then you normal summon, like you make an Ixie, you send a material to the graveyard, normal summon this, get it back. I can see how you'd be able to make like a lead yoke and a Dempsey. Although if you use the Dempsey to search like a, an extender, you wouldn't be getting the cross counter. Maybe you play more of the cross counter. Again, maybe this is a go second deck. I, I'm still still drawing a blank here. All right, Battling Boxer Sparrer. Sparrer. That, that's, that's a lot of R's. Okay, 1200 attack, level 4. If you control a Battling Boxer, you can special summon this from your hand. If you do, you cannot conduct your battle phase for the rest of your turn. So, if this is a go first deck, then you want to play this at 3. And if it's a go second deck, you don't want to play this at all. <laughs> And right now, I'm leading towards go second because this seems like the strongest card and your opponent needs monsters. Unless there's some way to put monsters on the field. All right, let's try Battling Boxer Headgear. Level four, 1,000 attack. When this card is normal summoned, you can send one Battling Boxer from your deck to the graveyard. The first time this attack position monster would be destroyed by battle each turn, it is not destroyed. Another... Old school Ixie monster. Uh, didn't this get an effect where it was sent to the graveyard by a card effect? You could special summon one monster from the graveyard except itself, or set one counter counter from your graveyard to the field. So there's that, and when this goes to the graveyard, you can add one to your hand. So this is another in the long line of 
maybe a good one of? <laughs> hard to say, hard to leg. I mean, you will clearly have, like, monsters in the graveyard when you're detaching. And someone just pointed out, like, yeah, you can't just normal summon this, tribute it, and still get two battling boxers. So I guess you do play this at three, even if you're going first, because it's still one card that gets you into two cards. And I guess based on all these level fours so far, you know, if you, you want another normal summon, go ahead and put this one in there. And then a lot of these you're just playing, I guess, to put into the grave. They don't really do anything in the graveyard. I'm not sure what you get off of these two. Uh, the third one, this is one I'm familiar with, if nothing else, because it's good and limited. And I know it's not going to see play in the modern deck. When you take battle damage, special summon this from your hand and gain life points equal to the damage you took. Neat, neat little hand trap and dual links, but not particularly useful here. And that's all the level fours. The rest are threes and twos. Granted, they might modulate their levels, but I'm not sure we want to play anything that just lets us go into a uh, cheat commissioner. I don't think we want to turbo that out necessarily, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay, battling boxer rabbit puncher. 800 attack, level three. At the start of the damage step, if this attacks a defense position, destroy it. Okay, Drillroid, uh, I think you're a little outdated there. We'll just, we'll just do that. Uh, Battling Boxer Rib Gardna, 100 attack, level 3. During either player's turn, banish this from the hand or graveyard. Target one Battling Boxer, banish it until your next standby. These are Ixies, so if you banish one of those to try to protect it, it loses all its material. This is this is like really early Ixie stuff where like, rather than give you a way to special summon two level fours onto the field, they gave you a way to like, protect a four, get it off the field for a turn, so next turn it would still be there, and then you would be able to do something with it. But in this day, way outdated. Probably outdated even back then too. Okay, Battling Boxer Counter Punch, zero attack. What kind of boxer has zero attack? Level three, during the damage step of either player's turn, when a Battling Boxer is attacked or being attacked, banish this from your hand or graveyard. That monster gains a thousand until the end of this turn. All right, so you got like a Kalut effect, although Kalut I think gives you 1400. Uh, it has to be in the hand or graveyard. So, maybe? Do we have some way to get it? I mean... The thing is, this increases or decreases all levels. So I guess you could like, Promoter, Summon 2, Cross Puncher, make them both level 4, and then do it, and then you'd have two Honests, essentially, in the graveyard. You can only use once per turn, but that might be worth it in this deck with how little playables. I'll, you know what? I'll do it because it's funny. We'll go ahead. At this point, I'm just trying to make the deck interesting, not necessarily make it better. <laughs> uh, and then we've got we've got one more. A level 2. The only level 2. Battling Boxer Big Bandage. She's got all those Bs in a row. 1100 attack. The first time this would be destroyed by battle, it is not. Once per turn, you can target one battling boxer that's banished or in your graveyard that has a level. All battling boxers become that monster's level. Why would they give you a card that modulates all the battling boxers when the vast majority of them are already level four? This is just that it's like they, they gave this deck of level fours a level two that changes itself to be level four if you've got something in the graveyard. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, I was I was really hoping this would be uh better than this, but at the moment it really just does look like like a like we're we're gonna be ending on a solemn solemn judgment. Probably going second, attacking with this, sucking up a monster, and then doing some stuff. They're very, very bad, unfortunately. Uh and the thing is, like something like this might work if this wasn't three level fives. If you didn't have to invest quite so much material into it, or if there was some way to just like absolutely spam the field. Like, honestly, if, if they wanted this to compete in the modern game, 
This should have summoned three level fours from the deck. This should have just given you all the pieces for this right off the bat, especially since it locks you into battling boxers anyway. Like, what are they afraid you're going to do with three? Like, make make a bigger Nos Nova Kaiser or something? Like, I, I don't know what they thought you were going to do. Because if you're going to play this go second, you want as much room for board breakers as possible. You basically want your opening hand to be like four board breakers and then two starters. Or just, I guess this is one where you just get a whole bunch of extenders and you just hope that like normal summon, special summon, normal summon, special summon, and you can just play through the disruption. But uh, I'm not sure if this deck is even close to good enough to doing that. We'll see. The thing about it is that there, there is one hope here. And that's that this can take a level 4 or lower fire warrior monster. So there's potential that there's some other support out there that might be able to help make this a little bit better. Unfortunately, finding that means looking through all the available level 4 lower fire warriors. Uh, so I'll do that now. I'll put in the legwork. If you're new, you probably don't want to. At this point, I would just look up like a deck profile. <laughs> but I'll go ahead and see if I can find anything interesting. Just for the sake of, uh, you know, trying to trying to stick with uh, the whole premise of the show. Five hours later. Alright, so after looking over every level four lower fire warrior monster... Uh, the only one we can really use consistently is this Infernal Knight Ricardetto, who you can banish from your hand or graveyard to special summon a level 4 or lower Fire Warrior from your hand as a tuner. It's not the fact that it's a tuner that matters, it's just the fact that you can special summon something. Because the unfortunate thing about this is that our best card, the card that gets us like a 2 for 1, it's also a special summon if we're going second, which I'm thinking I'm going to try to make a go second version of this deck, because that seems like it's the the only thing that really does, the only thing that really works, because you can't just sit on one counter trap and hope that's going to be enough, and this deck doesn't have a whole bunch. The point is, this thing locks you out of summoning anything except for battling boxers the entire turn. So you can't summon before you activate this or after you activate this, or you can't special summon, rather. There's a couple things that maybe you might want to normal summon, but oftentimes you might have to normal summon this, or you're probably going to normal summon one of these, or a battle in Boxer. So it just doesn't really feel great. This is the only card that, like, you can search off of the Dempsey and then activate from your hand to summon a battle in Boxer. So that might be good. You know, if you got a cheap second, then you get another normal summon. But we're really going to need as as many summons as possible. So I went ahead, that's why we, we've maxed out on the Sparer. We've got two Shadow, maybe I should go ahead and play three. We're playing the two one-ofs here. Uh, like, fuck it, I'll go ahead and add a Glass Jaw in there, why not? We have cards that send him to the graveyard, and there's a chance we want to send him to the graveyard to add this back. So we can use it next turn or something like that, assuming there, there even is a next turn. We'll have to see. From here, it's a matter of filling out all the tech cards and everything. And to start with, let's go ahead and put Reinforcements of the Army. We've got a level 4 Warrior deck. We need that. And we'll go ahead and put, uh, what is it? Noble Arms? There it is, Durandal. This is a spell that lets you search any level 5 or lower Fire Warrior from your deck to your hand. We've got almost 40 cards and we really want to get to this in particular. So we're going to add three of these. It's not the best searcher because you need to commit to something before you can do this. And especially in a go second deck, they probably going to have a way to pop this or stop you from getting to it. But we can at least try. <laughs> and I mean, you can't equip this to any monster. So you can equip this to your opponent's stuff and then you essentially pop it to search a monster. So we'll try that out. And then the rest is just going to be go second staples. We're just going to fill up, see the best we can do with something like this. Six and a half hours later. All right, so after looking at a whole bunch of go second staples, I managed to come up with a little something. I mean, we're putting in Max C because it's the best card in the game. If you're playing Master Duel, you have to play Max C, uh, especially if you're on a deck that is not good. You, you want to put this in there. And then I was trying to think of something that would like get rid of their monsters. 
The problem, of course, is that, again, Promoter locks you into only battling boxers, so you can't kaiju, you can't uh, lava golem, because you're not allowed to special summon anything. You are allowed to normal summon other stuff, though, and if you're not familiar with sphere mode, it tributes three of your opponent's monsters to normal summon it to their side of the field. So you can sphere mode and then still have access to this effect, you just don't have your, your actual normal summon. But I was like, okay, if we're going second, and we have three of this, and we have three of this to search it, plus we've got terraforming, and then we've got three Ricardetto, we'll put this at three, and then we can use this to like special summon anything from our hand. So if we've got like a second chief, we can special summon that. That gives us the extra normal summon. We go in, we make our rank four. If we've got the upper cutter, we special summon that. That adds the promoter, special summon the promoter. And I was like, okay, this is, it's not great, but it's kind of coming together. And then I looked at this again and realized in order to use its battle effect to actually get rid of the sphere mode and get in for damage and everything, uh, I would need to have Nova Kaiser as material for this. So we actually do need to find some way to rank this up. So I started looking at like the rank up material and there's so many and I didn't want to read them again. So I'm actually going to do something that I haven't suggested before, but it's actually a pretty good idea. And that's to go on to Master Duel and look at the related cards. You know, these Badland Boxer cards just came out in the newest box set. And they came out with a whole bunch of support related to them. So let's go ahead, switch venues from YGO Omega to Master Duel, and look at that new box and see what the hell they've got in there. All right, so we got Blazing Arena, has a whole bunch of fire stuff, including the new battling boxers. And you know, if you're watching this at some later date after the 32 days have passed, hopefully they, they add them to the battling boxer pack at some point, and that'll all be in there. So we're gonna go in there again. I'm gonna do some active reading. I'm just going to scan over everything and try to look for anything that says like rank up magic or Barian's force or anything that has to do with Ixies and see if I can come up with anything. One eternity later. All right, here's something. I guess I, I was just looking at this at the other one. I should have recognized it's got the Badlin Boxer on it. During the battle phase, if a monster is destroyed by battle or card effect, Take one number Ixie monster in your graveyard, special summon from your extra deck, one number C with the same type, but one rank higher, and if you do, attach that monster to it as material, then if you special summon a number C between 101 and 107 in its name, you can add one seventh or Barian spell trap, or one rank up magic quick play spell except seven force from your hand. Wow, that is a lot. So, during the battle phase, it's if a monster, so if I destroy an opponent's monster, it works, but I have to have a number Ixie in my graveyard. So, like, at first I was like, oh, if I destroy one of my opponent's monsters, I can do this, but I have to have one of these in the graveyard. Like, that's a number, but Dempsey isn't. Dempsey's, like, the one thing that might be there. I would have to already have this in the graveyard. And what number is this? This is C79. So I wouldn't be able to summon that. Where was that again? It's between 101 and 107. Yeah, we're not up in the hundreds. This is number 79. I don't understand how this would necessarily work. It's a quick play, so you can activate it on your opponent's turn, but this makes it seem like they want you to set this and the counter trap and then not negate any of your opponent's stuff while they're building a board, but instead wait until the, da the, the battle phase and then negate a monster effect. And then if you do, you can destroy that monster and then summon it back and then summon back the other one and that's it. You don't get the other part. What the fuck is this archetype? <laughs> Approximately 10 hours later. And that's it. That's, there's, there's no other, there was one rank up magic card that was oddly specific. I, I was really hoping I was missing something. Maybe they printed some, some new support for this, but it seems as not.
it seems as if uh, they, they really just printed this with the, they just, they printed, th they gave us a rescue rabbit for like five years after the deck was, it, like the deck was never good to begin with. I guess it wasn't awful, but it was never like great. And then like, you know, we'll make it great. We'll give them their own archetypal rescue rabbit that locks them into their awful cards that we've created. We'll give them a rank up and no way to rank up into it. So normally on this show, even if a deck is really bad, I will, I will finish the deck. <laughs> I will make the best that I could possibly make and then hop into some duels, test it out, see the best I can do, at least try it. But I really don't want to with this deck. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a skill I've been ignoring about deck building that maybe is a good lesson to learn. And that's when to know when to fold them. You know, when to, to cut your losses and just duck out. And I think in this case, I, I found it. I found the deck that is just not good enough to even be worth testing. Like, what, what am I going to do with this? You have a monster that's going to have, like, 3,000 attack and and a counter trap. Like, like blue eyes can do more than this. I, I complained last time about the Nemluria not really having a, 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 a win condition beside big number, but at least it had big number. This doesn't even really have that. They have one neat effect that allows you to non-targeting detach, but it revolves around you making a useless card and then somehow having a non-searchable way to rank this up in order to use it. They gave them one good card that maybe, you know, if you got a good hand, you could use it to make this card, but it wouldn't have its effects and it locks you out of everything except battling boxers. The restrictions on these cards are absurd and there's not enough payoff. It's... You know, if you want to make it for fun, if you want to have something casual you can play with your friends, if you've just got these cards in bulk and you're like, sure, I'll throw together a battling boxer deck, then like, by all means, you know, you can have fun with anything. But I, I usually like my decks to be at least like gold level playable. Something that could like at least try to put a fight up against a... Uh, against a rogue deck, like a reasonably competent deck, but I don't feel like battling boxers is even there. So rather than waste any more of our time trying to make this work, I, th I think we're just gonna end it here. <laughs> My apologies to any battling boxers enthusiast out there. Perhaps there's something I'm missing. If you have some way to play this, I wanna see it because I cannot for the life of me figure out anything. And, uh, you know, if you don't have that, I am curious to know from you, you know, uh, if I run into this situation in the future, do you, do you want me to admit it and, and do what I've done here and upload it anyway? Or should I just not upload it at all? I mean, it is a Patreon request, so I'm going to put this up. I mean, you're watching it now. But, uh... Yeah, I think we're just gonna call it here. <laughs> uh, Critter, do you, do you have any, any final words or anything you want to say to everyone? A poet as always. So thank you all for watching. Thank you for coming down. Thank you again, Cat Monarch, for suggesting this. Uh, I guess I guess next time maybe I'll have to vet these a little bit. I don't know. It's a blind deck building show, but I appreciate it anyway. You know, we learned an important uh, lesson about how bad uh, battling boxers are. <laughs> and until next time, good luck and have fun. All right, so I know I said I was done. I know I said I couldn't do anything with this deck, but I had to know. I, I had to know. There had to be some way to, to play this deck. So I, I went on YouTube, I searched up battling boxer decks, and it turns out there was one key thing I was missing. Uh, set uppercutter, or whatever it's called, the uppercut guy, he has the ability to search a counter counter trap. And we looked through earlier, you know, all of the battling boxer counter traps that have counter in the name. What I didn't realize is that there was another one from another archetype. Flame Vel Counter. This is a counter trap that has counter in the name, 
When a spell trap card is activated, banish one fire monster with 200 defense from your graveyard, negate the activation, and destroy it. And wouldn't you know, this has two, 200 defense. Uh, there might be others that have... No, it's just him. And so what that means is that if you don't try to make it go second, if you try to go first, this card by itself, just the promoter, even if you can't special summon it, that allows you to do this combo where you get uppercut, uppercut searches this trap, then you overlay it with whatever else, you make Dempsey, Dempsey gets this trap, and you get to end your turn on two counter traps. One monster negate, one spell trap negate, um, and it only costs you one card. And you know, with, uh, between this and reinforcements to the army and three Durundal, you've got, like, seven ways to get to that one card combo. Uh, because those are the only really good uh, battle and boxer cards, or the new ones, and then, like, a couple tech cards. You can afford to play, like, 17 hand traps. And you're gonna need it, because if this thing gets ashed, your turn is over. You know, if you normal summon this, tribute it, uh, and they ash it, you're, you're just fucked. Which, in a format where Ash is eternally the second most played card after Max C, you're, you're gonna be a little bit screwed. And I mean, honestly, if they Max C you, you're kinda screwed too, because you're going to give them at least two draws. So, you know, one of each card to chew through this, plus whatever their opening hand was already going to be. So, it's, it's not great. Although, because this does tribute itself off, you can play something like Gamma, and then you Gamma the Ash. Although, now that I think about it, you probably can't do that because you're locked into battling Boxer. You can't, you can't summon the, the, the thing. I, every time I try to come back to this deck, I just get more, I'm like, I, I, you know, maybe it's not as bad. It is as bad. It's that bad. But there is something you can do there. I guess, you know, and I wanted to end the episode. If you came here looking for a battling Boxer deck, Here's what you could do. You know, we'll go ahead, I guess, uh, Nibiru. We'll go ahead and put that in there. There is one other thing I didn't consider, which is, uh, this, these effects. Uppercutter and, I guess we'll put in a glass jaw. sure, why not? Uh, glass jaw. they both say that if this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can either add a battling boxer from your graveyard back to your hand, or you can set one of your counter traps from your graveyard. And I was confused as to how these effects were supposed to work because I was under the impression that the only way you would really destroy stuff by card effects is the cross counter, which requires a Nixie monster. But then I read these effects more carefully and I realized that Dempsey's effect to detach does not detach as cost. It detaches as an effect. And the same thing with Lead Yoke. Lead Yoke is if a monster would be destroyed, uh, you can detach one material instead of destroying one of those cards. That counts as a card effect. So as a result, you do have ways to recycle your cards. You can basically get this back or get your counter traps back. And it allows you to every turn just like set another counter trap. Now, um, this deck is still not good. <laughs> I still don't think it could get, get beyond gold, maybe platinum at best you would really struggle with Diamond, and you would be carried entirely off the back of playing a whole bunch of hand traps. It's just a deck that plays a whole bunch of hand traps, and you happen to have, like, a small enough engine. And, you know, at least personally, if you're making a pure deck, right, I want that deck to, like, do something unique that it does. The fact that you're searching one card, and it's not even, like, an in... Or you're searching two cards, and one isn't even an in-archetype card... Not great. As, uh, I don't know. I, I still don't like it. But if, if you wanted something, if you wanted to know what this deck can do, it can do that. You know, two counter traps is nothing to, to sniff at. You can recycle them. But uh, it's still not good, and I still don't want any du do any duels. But <laughs> at least there's something. Anyway, uh, good night.